All right, we're here with the 1967 Rockwell Lathe. And uh, I believe this is before Delta purchased them. And I wanted to show how the back gear and how direct drive works in this. So I guess we'll start out with direct drive. Right now it's in back gear. So I'm going to put it back in the direct drive and just simply do this. And I should have already had it ready is what I should have did. All right, so now it's in direct drive. And what direct drive is, is simply directly transfers power from your pulley, your belts, right into your spindle, chuck, center, whatever you have up here. And, of course, if I turn it, you'll see everything turns together. One-to-one -one ratio. And here the belts are groaning. So that's your direct drive. Your... To get the back gear, you have to engage in the neutral and then and then pull back gear into place. So here's your neutral. You just simply turn that. And how that's working is you can see here when I turn it, it'll disengage that. Now it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually splines on this. This is your half clutch or clutch half. This is your other clutch half. And this is actually hollow and slides on the end of your spindle shaft here. And it has splines on the outside, so it's actually not physically connected. The clutch half is going into this groove here is what actually physically connects it. And I actually have an old clutch half here that you can see. So you can see what's on the inside. You see the splines? So what's happening when you slide it, whoops, this is backwards. When you slide it, it's disengaging. And of course now that whole, the, both clutch halves can turn together without spinning. The spindle or vice versa the spindle will spin without spinning the clutch halves so that's how you get to that point now how you actually engage back gear how it works i mean is when you pull out on this you're engaging back gear how that works is this shaft goes clear through into this great big shaft with the spline on here and you can see it down in here i'll give it a spin make it easy to see and it's going back there so you pull on this, and now you can see some grooves appear. And they're just simply straight grooves that's angled the same, same degree angle as your splines. And that's, that's how you get, get your, motion, your motion transferred back here. How it actually is engaging it is this does not turn once it's running. There's a shaft inside it turns. This is bored off center, so as soon as you pull on your handle here, it gives you a camming effect, and I think if I can get the phone in the right place, you can see, actually see the camming effect on this smaller gear right here. You'll see how it's over here, it's above it. When I disengage it, you'll see it drop below it. Up. But it's actually two motions. It's actually an upward motion, and it's an inward motion. So you're actually raising the gear up too. I think if I put it right here, you'll be able to see. See the gear? You can see the teeth now right here. Now you can't. Over here, you can see, you can see it's disengaged in here. Now I engage it and it meshes the teeth. Come on, go in. It wants to be a pain. There it went. Now it's in. Now, by doing that, since this is dis disengaged and I showed you it's free, now you're transferring power from the small gear to the big gear. It goes over here. From a small gear again to a big gear. And that's giving you a 6 to 1 ratio. Every 6 turns of this, spindle turns once. So, I think, uh, I, think I can give it a little spin here. Well, I'll just, I can just turn it on. I got it set for the slowest speed. You can turn this on with the top off and the slowest speed in back gear. But that's the only time you can do it. Any other time... You're going to get an oil bath. It'll work, you just get an oil bath. So we'll turn my rotary phase converter on because this is three phase. I never, I could have converted it, but I knew when I bought this, I was going to buy a mill, which is under the ghost there. And I knew it was going to be three phase, so I didn't want to have to convert something every time I bought it, so I just bought that. All right, so now we got everything engaged. Now we can turn it on. And I want you to notice too, you'll see this turning at a slower rate than this. All right, so on we go. 
Of course, you can see the oil, but you can see how the two rates are different. And that goes over to there, spins the shaft inside, spins the smaller gear, and then back to the bigger gear, and then back to your spindle. Let me shut the noisy uh, phase converter off. Now there's a couple, this thing actually has an interlock on it. And what the interlock prevents you from doing, it, it isn't foolproof. You can still do things to this to screw the gears up. But what the interlock does is keeps you from re-engaging into direct drive with the back gear still locked in. Because if you notice, they're turning at two different rates. And if you was able to re-engage, let me get down here and pull this belt around. So you can see that, that ear on there. All right. If you was able to re-engage this portion into this slot with it in back gear, bad things would happen. Because they're turn, turn at two different rates. But you can see, I'm turning the handle and it won't go in. What's keeping that from happen, happening is on the back of this, this bull gear here. This is called the bull gear. It's an 80 tooth gear. On the back of it is this, this round disc. It's, it's, it's just a washer, a really big washer. And what it does is when you engage in the back gear, it li mount lines up with this slot. If it's not in that slot, it won't engage. And it also, once it's in that slot, if I try to go back in a direct drive, you'll see it. The slot keeps it from sliding. That's a pretty, pretty cool feature. Now how this thing's actually sliding, I forgot to show you, is... Let me disengage back here so you can see the movement. Line up the spindle. A little bit more. Is This is, just, this is a cam here, too. The holes drilled off center, a little pin in that brass piece. And you can see as you turn it, it just that's how it works. Now the other part of that interlock is once you're in direct drive, which we are now, if you forget to put this in neutral and try to engage this, it won't go. And what, how that's working is that washer, again, is hitting. But this time it's hitting the raised portion, the other side of the groove of this. So that's keeping it from going in. Getting right there, see it? So that's kind of a cool little feature. It kind of takes some of the accidental out of it but what you can do to destroy it if you feel like destroying it is what the teenagers in school like to do is you can have this running you can have this running in neutral now if i engage back here it's going to screw them teeth up which i'm not going to do it but if, if you can do it. You can sit there and jiggle it and it'll go in after it bangs and grinds and everything else for a while. And the other part of that it'll let you do, the interlock doesn't prevent, is if, if this is turning and I want to go into direct drive, I can turn this with it running. And eventually it'll line up and go in there, but it'll, because it's spinning so fast, it'll keep bouncing across it. And... I don't even know if you can get it to go in with the, with the chuck on. You might be able to with the chuck off because there's so much mass mass in here to take this to zero to the, to the RPMs it's going at. is too much mass to do it. But if the chuck wasn't on there and you just had the center on it, it might would do it. I don't know. But that's what people do. They try to do. They'll sit here and turn this with it running and force it in there. So, yeah, you don't want to do that. turn this off so now I think I pretty well explained all that I want to leave it in neutral and I wanted to show you well I want to show how the oil works on this but I think we'll make another video for that because this is already nine a little over nine minutes long so anyways, that's how your back gear mechanism works. And I just thought it'd be interesting to put that on there in case anybody's going to buy one of these or going to work on them. You, you got some uh, information before you ever pop that off. 
Anyways, thanks for watching. And like I said, I'm going to make a how, how the thing gets oil video right after this.